bags are packed Are you ready to go? This time tomorrow we'll be on the road Riding with you in the sunnier days I wouldn't want it any other way Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to Children <laughs> of Erte. We're so excited to have you here. Um, as usual, we will start it off with Adam Bradford and our sponsors. Thank you, Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms, for your sponsorship. And you can grab an Electrum chess code on the overlay and bouncing around in chat. I know that Lauren sometimes does like a, you know, like like point at which direction it is i saw it because i was going through so much footage of all of our episodes recently yeah, I saw her wow just, yeah it's it's so impressive that is good. i mean it is so impressive i'm lucky so i'm just right you. next to it so i have an easy point that's it thank you idol champions of the forgotten realms we also have die hard dice and according to our list from uh our viewer marcus reedner out there they have supplied us with quintile quoters, quintile quoters. So we are on the cues here, folks. That means we're, have to look we're that almost up. out of alphabet here. Um, and um, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. I think it's quintile. It's a quintile, quintile. I don't know, um, but quintile quoters. And uh, yeah, that that that's it. Um, so you can grab ten percent off your order at Die Hard Dice with the code Erte, and we're also gonna be giving away a gift card in chat, so keep your eyes peeled for that. And finally, tonight you'll hear the, uh, you know, kind of strange and eerie <laughs> wind tones of Sirenscape, because epic games require epic sound. I am Adam Bradford, I'm the CDO at Demiplane, and I am playing Silas Sorrell, since everybody just knows what his real name is now. Oh. Hey everybody, I'm Alicia Marie. You can find me all over socials and pretty much all over the internet as Alicia Marie Body. I'm a creative artist and a costumer. Yes, it's still October. So no, I have not slept. <laughs> you can find me most notably here on Tuesdays and on Fridays on Be Never Ending for Radiant Stories, which is a game set in the Radiant Citadel. DM'd by Lauren Irvin and playing with Jen Dreamus. Oh, I got it right now. I'm doing like the, you know what I mean. Uh, so anyway, otherwise, just follow me on socials and blah, blah, blah. Tonight, I am playing six foot four. Bruce Armstrong, attorney for hire, because I'm sure she's fired by now. <laughs> it's ruined that perfect attendance record with one trip. First vacation ever. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Hi, I am Jen Kreshmer. You can find me on Twitter as at DreamWisp, uh, on uh, streaming on Twitch as DreamWisp Jen. Uh, I am a performer, writer, um, disability consultant. I do all sorts of fun things. I am here. I am on Radiant Stories. I'm part of um, Anansi's Tapestry of Lives. The Kickstarter is live right now. Uh, we have more than 85 different people involved writing NPCs for your games, voicing NPCs for your games all sorts of neat stuff. So please check it out on Kickstarter. And tonight I am playing your friendly neighborhood troublemaker, Maeve Morgan Flynn. From Australia, Hi. right? That, that <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> <laughs> and occasionally parts of Canada. <laughs> I mean, it's, we're all surrounded by snow. And so it's just, it's Canada, right? That's, that's where we've been the whole time. You know, Feruza, you could, Feruza, you could just say that we're in Canada the whole time. Mythic, right mythic home. Canada. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lauren Urban. I'm the content coordinator at Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. You can find me on Twitter as Obo Lauren. Um, you can find me hanging out with my Canadian husband, wishing we had more coffee crisp on the internet. Tonight, I'm playing Carolyn Stern who hasn't had her real name said in a very long time and had a moment where she'd forgotten what it was, but because that's because people call her Neb. Oh, okay. Hi. <laughs> Hi, I'm Hope Lavelle. You can follow me on Twitter at the Hope Lavelle. Um, and tonight I am playing your 80 year old hummingbird, Miss, uh, Miss Robin Beckett. 
Wonderful. And I am Deborah Ann Wool. I'm your storyteller for this evening. Um, I am all over the socials. I have a podcast, Truest Blood. I do d and I do acting. <laughs> but tonight we are here for Children of Erte, the 24th chapter of this story. Um, so from last time, we remember that you all finally made your way into the, the very depths of the Twin Creeks mine. Uh, when you were down there, you uh, strategically and skillfully made your way across a frozen lake and uh, using the power of belief and teamwork, <laughs> <laughs> retrieved a piece of broken glass long frozen in the ice. Uh, you then made your way back up to the top, packed up your things and got on a push cart and headed out down the tracks back towards the train. Um, so I think... Did we say what time of day it was? I'm trying to remember what we said last time. I didn't have I thought you said book. there was daylight left. Yeah, you said it was I think daylight. it was still daylight. It was maybe mm -hmm. midday. I want to say it was like middle of the day because you had gotten up and gone to do that last little adventure. So yeah, it's probably like noon. Um, on this push cart, you are making so much more speed as, you know, than walking. You guys can really get a good rhythm going um, as you sort of up and down with this push cart. It takes you down and, and you're sort of just gliding through this beautiful forest land, this mythic Canadian <laughs> landscape. Um, kind of which is enjoying because Neb yeah. turned into a wolf and so she's running along the side. And this is like the first right. time she's been able to just like run in this form and not have to worry about running from something. Yeah. So she's having lots of fun. Yeah. When the whole time you've been here, you know, breathing in that cold air as a human being is a little bit, you know, sort of freezes your insides. But as a wolf, it seems to just, you know, energize you, that crisp, cold air as you take it deep into your little wolf lungs and speed ahead. Um, so it doesn't take you very long. This trip going back is maybe only 30, 40 minutes um, as you begin to see the train up in the distance. However, what you do not see is the avalanche of boulders. Instead, you see Steve the statue standing stock still at the edge of the mountain, a pile of boulders on the other side. Uh, one of you, I imagine, it's Fruza and Silas, right, that are doing the push cart. One <laughs> yeah, of you pulls the brake, <laughs> slowing yourself up. As you mean, glide in front of the cow catcher at the big, at the front of the steam engine, Steve, Steve the statue staring down at you. Wait, I'm is that Steve. the Kool Aid Man? That, that's what me, Hope and I bumped into at the third level. Is wait, 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 wait. Let's not move any any further until we. Is is he moving? Don't no, but Neb is because Neb immediately has run up to the statue because <laughs> oh, Steve. And so don't give him a hug. She stops <laughs> short turns back into herself because if it's only taken 45 minutes, she's been able to stay a wolf this whole time. She goes, and then looks yes. at the statue and goes, you must be Steve. Hi. Uh, now be careful. Stock still. I mean, just towering over you. I mean, this is 10 feet tall over, you know, it's twice your size, Neb, practically. Um, and Neb, you notice that snow, piles of snow have sort of mounded on, on Steve's head and shoulders. Oh, Steve's been here a while, apparently, or at least long enough to gather some snow. Is he? Is he back to just being a statue? So, Miss Robin, did you talk to him? For reasons, did you talk to him before, or was it more of like a he broke and crushed your bones kind of thing and then ran out of there? It, we communicated, but not through language. Does that make sense? Not at all. No, absolutely. It makes a lot of sense around here. I want to walk to the side of Steve and kind of uh -huh. peer around back. Around behind the back of Steve? Yeah. Um, you notice as you've been looking, you know, the front of Steve is covered in these intricate carvings and, and rivulets and sort of, he's just like almost tattooed uh, mm -hmm. with... Um, but but in the etched, he's etched all over his stone. And as you go around the back, you can see that it continues all the way around the back of, of this statue, um, just interwoven um, like like vines crawling over, roots crawling over one another. Um, Robin, DeFrizzi, you described Steve, but this is this is amazing. I think the more important thing is that look what he's done for us. I mean, how do we, we know, know he did it for us, though? Like, 
He might be trying to steal the train for himself. Well, then why did he move all the rocks and then stand here for Or for the hour? evil mastermind that's controlling out. him. Why does it have to be an evil mastermind? Mm. Uh, are there How good masterminds? Of good masterminds. <laughs> Well, the one that cleared the the rocks so that we can just get on the train and go. That now, can like you can you just back up just a little bit though? Because I, like they said not to touch him, and I haven't. But, but I'm kind of curious if I touched him with my mind. <laughs> that, that sounds incredibly inappropriate. I mean, it's it's just like I mean, I'm just talking about like a shoulder tap with my with my mental faculty. Just a little poke at the amygdala. Yeah, well, no, what is an amygdala? Isn't that in the brain? Well, you said in in, in the mind. Yeah. No, 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 no. I mean, I don't him remember that with biology. my mind in his shoulder. I'll do it. Let's see what happens. Well, okay. All right. All right. Now, I'll, let's I'll back up, it. though, like, because I don't want him to turn into, like, a helicopter and just start spinning and with his <laughs> arms and, like... Too many video games. games. Yeah. 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 Uh, all right. Before so. Neb backs up, she will attempt to look Steve in the eye, and it's going to be one of one of these. <laughs> uh, Silas wants to say hi as well, and she'll take one big step back. Okay. You get right. no response from Steve. So Silas is just going to reach out and kind uh -huh. of, you know, just just a tap, like not definitely not threatening. Uh huh. On his shoulder with On his your shoulder. With energy. my telekinetic force, yes. Gotcha. Um, you see no reaction from Steve, but some of the snow on Steve's shoulder brushes off, sort of falling to the side um, with a heavy thud. It's, it's like thick, wet, heavy snow. I am going to, after seeing no reaction, I am going to proceed to then telekinetically dust off all of the snow from Steve. I'm just so going to <laughs> The rest of you are watching. It. It's just, you know, <laughs> this wet snow sort of falling off. Uh, you can see he's, you know, it's left sort of a wet mark that very quickly now as the sun is, you know, it's 1 or 2 p.m. now, bears down, has melted a little bit. Uh, you can see the wet sort of marks on the the top surfaces of Steve. Is there anything um, notable about the hit, the markings? I've never seen Steve before, so... <laughs> yeah, you want to give me an investigation check, please? Sure. What if his name's not Steve ever? We don't know, though. We, we had to give him a name, something. <laughs> we didn't know what... Well, Rod and I, we didn't know what to call him. 16. A 16. Um, so you see what the others had told you about, that these intricate designs, um, if you follow them closely, like those old, like, follow the wires things, you can see that the sort of the spaces between them seem to create um, images of the elements. So clouds, um, waves, fire, or, you know, uh, uh, leaves, you know, they're kind of the these elemental images begin to sort of pulse out to you and that they all do seem to terminate in a heart center. There's all of these lines do seem to kind of radiate from that one spot. Are any of them reacting to the snow at all? Mm, doesn't appear so, no. We would, did uh, Robin and I, we, we told them basically everything about Steve, right? Like how yes. we got him to move. Okay, so they, you guys remember how. Yes. <laughs> uh, I actually, like just, you know, in case anyone has forgotten or possibly didn't listen in the first place, um, what what happened with this statue? <laughs> <laughs> well, it goes um, like this. Yeah, yeah, we, we found him, and then and then we were trying to get to the clue behind him, and and then there were this. It was like this thing that we had to do. We couldn't figure out, and we were like, "Oh, it's like the elements." But then there's one element missing, and we thought it was heart. So we tried to give him a hug, and then it crushed my arm. And then <laughs> we had to strategically have a, another movement, and then he would let go of my arm, and when you reach for the clue, and then and then Veruza was on the other side of the room, just slapped to the wall, and then I was like, "Don't leave me, Veruza." I need you and then uh, and then we figured it out with all of the elements and then he got up and he walked right wait, up. wait what was the heart part the what? heart part was the hurt part <laughs> oh, I mean, just a misspelling 
<laughs> well, do you think we're supposed to... Conscription errors. Do you think we're supposed to activate him again? No, I think that he is... I think he is content where he is. He's come. I think... He's cleaned the tracks for us. And... Deborah, is he on the tracks or beside them? He's beside them. Oh, okay. He's not blocking the way. Okay, He's nice. standing sort of up against the edge of the mountain, um, sort of looking at the train and out into the, the woods. I wonder if he wants to come with us. That would be interesting. <laughs> I mean, it's, you're, you're welcome to, if you want to come with. <laughs> He's probably not going to answer. I don't know if he can even hear me. I mean, I mean I'm all the way he down here. Hear. Because you know, like when you get on a video call sometimes and it's like, you can hear the other person, but they can't hear you. <laughs> it happens all the time. Like, it seems like it happened just like moments ago. Yeah. Um, and, you know, so that might be what's going on with Steve here Christ or, or whatever your name is, mm -hmm. whatever your name is. Do the patterns uh, on Steve seem to match the pocket watch pattern, the leaf? Do you have it to pull out? I do. They do. Oh, the wave, yeah. the wave forms on the wave one that you found and the IV leaf forms on the leaf one you found seem to match almost perfectly. <gasps> We'd like oh. to hold it up and see if there's anything that changes about hey, the pattern. They're genius. So as you hold it up in front, it's almost like if you'd move it around, because, you know, it's, it's like each section of his torso is sort of dedicated to the specific element. And as Feruza and, and, and um, Robin are remembering, you know, they had to sort of touch the element to this, you know, the correct, you know, corresponding piece. So as you take, say, the waveform pocket watch and hold it up, if you move it around, you can actually find a spot where it almost disappears. It so Silas has the, has the waves. I only have my... Oh, you have, my sorry, wave. the ivy one. So the, the same with the ivy one. So you can I, I'll find have out of the cart and with, you know, walking in those sort of small mm -hmm. steps, leaning heavily on my cane, um, yeah. go up and, and take the, the pocket watch and hold it up to the ivy or to the leaf pattern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so as you find that spot and it almost disappears, you feel a magnetic pull. You want to give me a dexterity saving throw or are you going to let it go? Oh. Um, I think I'm going to let it go. It slams into the side of Steve, almost, you know, just with incredible force, magnetized to Steve's, I forget where it was, but <laughs> one of <Yeah>. Steve's torso <laughs> portions, uh, and just stands there hanging, the, the, uh, the chain hanging down. Perfectly oh, aligned. Well that, was, well, that was right. What What do you okay, think I'm it coming, means? I'm coming, I'm coming. Like, hey, hey, let's do it. Like, which, but, but wait, how many are there? Are there four? There are four there. different element areas. There is this central position of the heart, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but only sort of four elements depicted. How right, many so pocket watches do we have? I've got, I've got the wave thing. Just, just two, but maybe two is enough to get him going or something. Why do, wait, remind me why we want to get him going again? Because he can be useful out here. Do you see what he did with the avalanche? Yeah. Like, if we can figure out how to get this train going, we can get to the other mirror shards a lot quicker. Wait. Also, it's possible that either he made this or he, his creator made both. Maybe it's both. Maybe Steve is actually caught inside of the stone, and he's like a prisoner inside the stone golem creature. <gasps> Wait, do you think that the other pocket watches are on the train? We really didn't explore the train very much. We were in a hurry to get out of there. <laughs> we just wanted to get out of there. <laughs> well, now we have time. But let's Silas, see. did you want to try? Do the I, I, Yeah, I, I'm, I'm here. And then Silas actually, before he even gets there, starts mm -hmm. to just move it telekinetically yeah. ahead of himself, and then he's gonna try to uh, he, he can't, from the angle he's at, he can't really see very well. So okay. he's just going to kind of do a circle and see where the magnetic force is. <laughs> and then, uh, I mean, you find that, you know, as soon as you get within a foot, you can feel it starting to pull. And as soon as you're within six inches, just, it just grabs it instantly. Um, and it is strong. Like, it feels, even just from that sense, even uh, Maeve, it would take, it would be hard to pry that thing off. Oh. And nothing else happens. Nothing else happens. 
All right. We gotta find two more of these things. Let's tear before. this train inside out. Before, before so we the care. the carvings are the ivy is on one shoulder, the flames are you on remember? the hip, the waves are okay. on the clouds are on the hip, and the waves are on the shoulder. So we've got the two shoulders mm-hmm. covered. Two shoulders are covered. It's in oh. my notes somewhere, but thank you very much. Before we tear the train apart, I have now waited for days. We've got a shard. I really yeah, yeah, want to yeah, see yeah, what yeah. happens when we put that shard in the mirror. Even if nothing happens, it'll it'll <laughs> feel good to have a piece of it done, right? Absolutely. It will. Let's Don't go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay. <laughs> you think they have super glue or anything inside here? Like, how's it going to stick in there? How did the shit yeah. stick? <laughs> Yeah. Who needs super glow when you um, have magic? Magic? Yeah. Magic is now the solution magic for everything, glue. isn't it? Yes. <laughs> I feel like we're going to use know. it. Good excuse. To some degree. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm not responsible. It was magic. <laughs> <laughs> Fighting. So, that Neb, you're, you're running. Who has the shard? It's in Robin's bag. I Robin think, has it. Right? Robin. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Robin's going to be cloth. trotting with Neb. We're just kind of getting okay. there. Like, had to wait. Okay. <laughs> Hey, hey, maybe, maybe, maybe before we put it in there, the, and Silas is kind of hurrying after. Yeah. Before we put yes. it in there, maybe we should like I don't know a, a, a small plan, like a little bitty plan, like I don't know, like w- just have one foot inside the room in case when we put it in there, it's going to close us all in there. Uh, maybe I can float it over there instead of like somebody touching it in case it burns us. Yeah. I remember. I mean, this is a very dangerous world. So far. I remember. That thing that we faced in the room that we saw. Do you remember that? Well, yes, we, but we defeated that thing. No, I forgot the demon <laughs> creature that's attacking <laughs> us. Name. <laughs> Did y'all hear Miss Robin right there? She's like, yeah, we defeated. <laughs> <laughs> and besides, I mean, what if we need to be inside the room for when we... It, what if something good happens? So you're always such a downer. It does seem like a personal connection needs to happen. We needed to stand on circles to make things happen. We needed to touch things to make things happen. I think Robin's right. That's true. Yeah. You know, you I'll know what happens in, in an AR- when it happens. An ARPG, yeah. when everybody groups up, the fireball. <laughs> and then everybody's dead at one time. So, I mean, hey, I'm, I'm getting well, for you it. You do know this isn't a video game, to... though. <laughs> Are we certain of that? <laughs> I don't know, Silas. Does if that anything, mean... it's a reality TV show. We've established this. <laughs> Silas, does yeah. this mean you don't want to be in the room where it happens? <laughs> I love your reference, and that's going to make me be in there now. <laughs> so congratulations, Nebula. Neb's got I Silas figured out. Yep. <laughs> All right, Miss Robin, let's go. Right. So as you approach this train, you know, even though it's only been a handful of days, it feels like months. <laughs> um, at least 24 at weeks. Point, at least 24 <laughs> weeks. Uh, maybe more like 20. But uh, yeah, as you're coming close, again, the snow has settled onto this train. Um, it it's You can even see the frost that has grown up over the windows along the side, uh, almost making it difficult to see inside. This looks abandoned. Uh, all of the, f- the tracks and the footprints that you had left before have been filled in by the freshly fall, the storm that came through uh, since you've been gone. Uh, Neb, as you climb up, your hand, you know, grabbing onto the cold iron, <sighs> You know, as you step up onto that iron balcony and on back onto this train and you walk towards compartment A. The door Nobody lick anything metal. <laughs> I, mean, oh, I, I just want to make sure that. everybody knows. <laughs> I I assume you're probably just telling yourself, right? <laughs> I just wanted to make sure. The door to compartment A stands open. Oddly. While everything else is covered in frost and feels cold and dormant, there is an almost a humidity coming from that room. Just from the room? From the room. You, you know, looking at your, your own compartments just down the hallway, you know, they're dry and cold and sort of, um, you know, water that was left in a glass is frozen solid. Um, when you get close to that room, though, there's a, a strange sort of heat. It's moist in here. 
Oh, I hate that word. But you're right. This is almost the opposite of before, because before it was a really cold room, and now it's... at least it's more humid. I don't know what that means, but... it's interesting. Well, do we go in? Yes. Yeah, Neb's walking in over with. Neb, <laughs> Neb is walking inside. Robin is like hand on her shoulder, walking. Her. <laughs> yeah, Neb. <laughs> so excited! She is so excited. As you step inside, it is. It's. It's not hot, but it's warmer in here, and and the air feels like there's a, a thickness to it. Um, give me a perception check, Neb and Robin. Sure. Uh, Neb is so excited. <laughs> All she can focus on is this mirror. And like, that's it. Because I rolled it right over there. Six. <laughs> that's all well, she uses. Luckily, Robin got a 15. Okay, Robin. Um, you feel like you smell a, like a match has been struck in this room. Like, just that little bit of sulfur. Not much, just a little bit. All right, we should be careful. It's fireball. Well, well, yeah, when you pull it out of the bag, I mean, I, I know we've got it wrapped up in something, so just be careful when you take it out, because it's going to be jagged, mm. right? Right, right. That's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mabel come into the room and go sit down on the bed and watch okay. from there. Mm. Yeah, there is still this like light, cloudy mist in in the room uh, that just sort of seems to hang there, a cloud in this space, a shadow. Uh, Robin and Neb, as you step in front of this mirror, you can see that this shard. Robin, you've taken it out, or mm-hmm. you? Yeah. It's quite obvious where it goes. It's got a flat side on this one side, and you can see it matches the angle of the re- the one piece that's remaining. And you feel like you could just slide it between the frame and the wood, and it would sit right on that lower left side, right about covering up the image of the Twin Creeks mine on the wood behind. Yeah. Go ahead. I... Uh, 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 one sec. If we're all going to be in here, like, I don't know, Faruza, I think you're the strongest person. Um, Like, I I, I don't know, you know, like putting your foot down in front of the door or something where maybe the door doesn't just slam closed. Maybe, maybe. Faruza is actually in the doorway. She's standing in the door (laughs) at the ready. And then then Silas is going to like, did the, the door open inside, right? Uh, the door opens, yes, uh, no, oh, hold Didn't on. Didn't the door explode? Yeah, Feruza, like, oh, yeah. Feruza, oh, like, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. sorry, you're right, Feruza shattered it. That's right, there's Feruza. no door. Okay, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Sit in the doorway. <laughs> Even <laughs> better. Yeah. All right, so, so Silas, did you go into the room as well, or are you yes, out? Yes, I'm, I'm, Come in. I'm okay. And Feruza, you're standing right inside in the, the threshold. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So all five of you are there. Ooh. Neb and Robin standing in front of the mirror. Yes. Go for it, Robin. Robin's Me? Here. No. <laughs> no. This is all of you. Give it to the child. I'm 25. I'm small, but I'm not a child. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. Neb says to um, the ghost that's in the room. The voice in her head. Yeah, that Ivy's like, you know, saying, all right, if you want. And Neb will take it, and she will just go ahead and put it right in as soon as she's got hold of it. Um... It slides right into the spot. Um, And even as the seam connects with the lower one, it's almost as though that crack, it's almost invisible. You know, like when something's broken and you glue it back together and it almost kind of disappears. It fits so perfectly together. Um, In that moment, the room seems to get a little bit darker. The mist, the fog, a little bit thicker. Uh, You can still see each other, but everything feels just a little closer. Any noise from outside kind of hushes down. Neb and Robin, you're the ones closest. You see a bright blue eye, bare skin, and curly, tight blonde hair. 
look up at you out of the way out of the mirror. It's her, it's her, it's her. It's who? It's who? Is she oh, oh. smiling? Is she... What, what's her expression? You can only see about here. Okay. Okay. Oh. I would say you see just the tiniest little tip of a smile on her lips. And as she does, her hand rises into frame in front of her eyes. Bright red polish along her nails. Um... And reaching forward as you did, Neb, she writes on the glass. Two, one, three. Two, one, three. Two, one, three. What, what's two, one, three? Um, it's an area code in California. <laughs> Why? <laughs> That's a long way from here, I think. I don't, I, I don't think California is in middle Canada. Or wherever we it um, must be a, a code, maybe for a lock or something. And she's drawn it so that she's had to draw it backwards so that we can see 213. If she were on the other side of it, sure. Okay. okay. It, it, you can read it accurately. Okay. But yes, it, to your perspective, it 100% looks like she's behind this mirror writing 213. I don't know what it means, but we'll figure it out. Are, are you sure that it's a talking? one? Because if it's 23, it could just be talking about Michael Jordan. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, I Silas. Wish I was that brilliant. Uh, maybe, maybe it was just a smudge. Silas, if you want to take another look, but it clearly looks like a two, a one, and a three to me. Uh, Silas is going to walk a little closer here. And did anybody, yeah. and as he's walking, he's like, anybody notice it got a little bit, you know, foggier, a little bit darker in here? Mm -hmm. I noticed that we haven't exploded yet. I guess we should all just consider ourselves fortunate. And he, he looks at it, <laughs> and I assume sees a two, one, three. We see a two and a one and a three. And as you get closer, Silas, you know, again, this face comes back into view, and this this striking bright blue eye locks with yours. Can, can uh, you please? hear us? Um, again, just this little bit of a smile at the side of her cheek. And she looks almost at the two one three, and then back at you. Two one three. So is that a room on the train? Do we think? <gasps> Maybe. Oh, <gasps> we should go. We should go. <laughs> should we take her with us? <laughs> yeah, I, I think. Well, the think mirror, she's... the frames bolted to the wall. Oh, okay. But, uh, <laughs> you could, you could try to rip it off if you want. I'm not yeah. stopping you, but oh. she's not a, you know. <laughs> Handheld. Right, and then <laughs> Silas is going Pocket to keep book. talking to her actually just yes. to see. And it's yes. just going to say, So, can you, like, you can write things to us. So that means you can hear us because I saw you dart your eyes right there. Are you okay? She again sort of tilts her head trying to give you more of a view of her face, but I'll offer, you feel like she's, she, that's about all she can get to you. Um, hmm. That she needs the rest of the mirror. She can't shift to give yeah. you more. Um, so, you know, again, her hand comes up and places itself just along the side of this face. And her eyes look to you. Give me an insight check. While he's doing that, does it look like anything else in the room has changed? I'll give you that in just a second. So, um, with uh, that's your, a 23. A 23. Um, she doesn't appear to be in any immediate danger. You don't see any, you know wounds or anything to the part of her face or hand that you can see, but her eyes are begging you. Begging you to help. One more question, and then we're going to go try to find 213, whatever that means, but I just want to clarify, because I think we might have made some assumptions along the way. 
are you Ivy? Blink twice for yes. <laughs> in rapid succession. <laughs> um, you see one blink, two blinks with the eye that you can see. So I'm just going to assume you didn't have anything in your eye there, and that was a yes. Blink twice if that's right. <laughs> I miss. I miss. I just blink. wanted to be sure. I just to, to sure. blink with the eye that you can see. All right. Two, and one, three. If it was me, I'd be winking at you. <laughs> I mean, why not? Yeah, I'm, I'm Ivy. <laughs> yeah, I'm, Ivy. I'm Ivy. <laughs> I mean, that's that's a really good idea, though, Silas. Because now, now hopefully we have a way of at least asking some questions and getting a yes or no answer. That that makes a lot of sense. Well, I don't know, I don't know long... if it's foolproof because everybody has to blink at some point. So you know, it's like. So, the the, the cabins are lettered on the train, correct? They are. Well, two on three would be B A C, potentially. Yes. Ivy got back. Ivy <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> <you> got back. Ivy <laughs> got back. Um. Well, Miss Robin is right that. We haven't well, I been wanna, every- Sorry, I want to real quick go to Maeve's because Maeve asked about the room. So oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah. I just want to make sure it happens before we go away. So yeah, give me um, a perception check, Maeve. Sixteen. Sixteen. Um, everything looks the way it did when you left to you. Um, the, you know, the book that you took, things like that are gone. You know, that's what, uh, as you remember. But you also are like... Someone's been lighting matches in here. There's just a scent of, you know, that kind of initial spark in the air. Are there any candles or anything in here? Uh, sure. There's a, you know, there's a, like a single tapered candle on the side of the bed. Does it Um, look recently burned or is it dusty? It's dusty. It definitely has a burnt wick. It was burnt at some point in time. But it doesn't look like the top is still dusty. It doesn't yeah. look like it's been lit. Recently. All yeah, very dusty. Uh, there's no new, you know, wet wax or anything like that. Um, everything looks quite old and undisturbed. What else can cause that acrid smell? I think A sulfur would come from uh, me- not meteorite, uh, brimstone, I believe. Mm. They smell like sulfur. Hmm. What else? It's right on the tip of our tongues. All I know is when I smell smoke or sulfur, it just uh, it kind of chills me back to the war when things could just explode at any second. Speaking of which... Like fireballs. Where did... Where do we put the... the really explosive stuff that we took from the mine? <laughs> oh, oh, I just left it there. Oh, we brought it with us, didn't we? Or we didn't leave it there. I'm sure we packed it up. I put did it in not the- put that on the hand trolley unless you... Cyanide and... <laughs> yeah, cyanide and hand trucks. I mean, we had a, a, a small bucket of it. Yes. I just left it in the cave, the mouth of the cave, yeah, unless someone else got it. I mean, that was at my, you know, first fledgling steps into using telekinesis. So it was really the cyanide was just a practice thing. Okay. Well, we can always. I've grown beyond. Pick, we can always pick it up on the way to the town of Hollowvale. I was just thinking right. that the only explosive thing. So we just have, want right? to carry explosives with us on the train that we're gonna get running. We're gonna use it to get the train started again. I think. How does that work? <laughs> I don't know. We have to do a lot of reading. I think. We have a book. Like, do, do we? Does this thing run on coal or like? It's old. Some old other fossil fuel or old. something? Or? I, uh, <laughs> wasn't it? I, I know we didn't get a chance to go into the, the tender. Hey, is oh. there a generator where we can get some electricity going? <laughs> those are all good questions. We should find out all of them. Uh, just a reminder that when we saw the work that had been proposed for the car, uh, they had done extra fireproofing. If that's relevant to this mm-hmm. smoke smell, mm-hmm. sulfur smell. 
Ross. So it is a werewolf that is on fire. Oh, we're back to werewolf. the werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was, remember, he was all about the werewolves before we left, but now, I mean, this probably is a werewolf. It could absolutely be a werewolf at this point. I mean, honestly. And listen, like, this is kind of still pretty terrifying because we're in some mm -hmm. room that just darkened a few shades just because we put a magical mirror shard in the, the mirror, you know, casing here. But yeah. I've got to say, this is a dramatic improvement over that cave, and I am super glad to be here instead of there. Mm. Me too. There might be stuff, there might be snacks in the yes. dining car. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait. There was a safe. <gasps> yeah, we, we hadn't look in? We hadn't, we hadn't found it yet. Yeah. It was where the werewolf was. Well, there's a werewolf? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it sounds like there were a lot of places on the train that we never looked at. We need to also get the train running and figure out how yeah. to do that. So for the hot, hot water heater, yes. Yeah. Mm. So let's let's come up with a plan. Do we want let's to split try? Up. <laughs> I mean, we could do that too. If I mean, we could each take Cover a car. ground. Oh, I was thinking the first thing we try to do is figure out how to get the, the lights back on and the generator going so that way in case there's something that needs power in order to open if there's a door or a machine or something that we've got that covered also so that we can have hot water and snacks and then we can do like a <laughs> thorough look through of all the train cars Very simple. That sounds good to me Okay, where do we think the So we have a train book. Yeah. There. We do have one. Mm -hmm. That is going to tell us everything about how... I mean, it can't be any harder than, like, a YouTube tutorial. You ever tried to do, like, a bathroom repair from a YouTube tutorial? You know what? Yeah, you know so how that turns out? It turns out with you calling a plumber. <laughs> do we remember well, maybe when we the... We have a plumber. <laughs> Well, we're going to have to learn how to plumb. <laughs> do you remember? Do we remember when the train stopped? Um, mm -hmm. And the engine had stopped for the train. Mm -hmm. But was there a second, a secondary engine that was powering the the kitchen and the lights and everything for that time, or was the engine still running when we when we stopped? You can give me an intelligence check to see how much you remember. Sure. Uh, actually, I would love for you to give that. Do, do a that recall. Role. A recall. Yeah, check? it's a plus three with the my plus three. You cannot remember. Um, you can't remember if the engine was running or not, um, but you're pretty sure. Once the train in the morning, the train none of the lights were on. So when the train first hit, there was sort of a, a jostle of the of the lights. Um, so you can't remember in that period if they were on, if they were off, what those are, but the, you're pretty sure the next day when you guys were exploring with plenty of time, you can't, you don't think you remember any lights being on. I mean, it's gotta be like, at least if we can get the train itself running, because like, I watched this thing called like Snowpiercer, and it's basically like the train keeps going hours everything else so it's got to be if you watch right? it to the end <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah probably not an, an apt Soil comparison news people cockroaches <laughs> yeah well we can start with the locomotive in the tender and see if we can figure out what powers the engine and then go from there i don't know what tender means yeah, but yeah <laughs> That's the part of the train that's behind the engine that has all the stuff that the uses boost. the power oh, of like the engine. Oh, like the tinder that, like, burns. I like when you're so, making yeah. fire? Okay. Yeah. That's so, nice um, the, you know, you have a, you found a book about trains, right? About steam engines, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, maybe. Yeah, I have maybe a book, on, okay, the book yeah. on steam engines. Yeah, so, the, you know, again, it is... Things 
it is a dense text, um, but diagrams up the front uh, show you that, yes, there is a steam engine up front that essentially has a firebox in it um, in which you build the biggest, most hot fire that you can. It is surrounded then by a tank of water, which you get boiling, the steam of which is pushed through small little tubes into the pistons, which push the pistons, thereby pulling the wheels and making the whole thing go. Um, the main thing that you have noticed within all of this is that you have to watch for two things most importantly. The pressure cannot exceed or drop or else that can be deadly. Uh, and the water level in the tank, if that goes too low or too high, you can cause an explosion or overheating and the metal to explode. The tender behind is where the wood for the firebox will be kept. It's also where spare water can be kept. There'll be a tank there. Um, and you know, from what you saw at the mine, you saw a large water tower as well as piles of wood. So you do know that there are places along these routes where they would often refill these um, uh, resources. Um, the, the caboose then is the um, sort of living quarters for the engineer and the stoker, which is at the back of the train. The engineer mm -hmm. is the person who is driving the train, you know, going forward, reversing, braking, keeping an eye on the pressure gauges, releasing pressure where they need to, making sure the water uh, level stays where it needs to be. And the stoker is keeping the fire going. So the stoker just continuously, as long as that train is running, is throwing wood into that fire and keeping it hot. That sounds stressful. It yeah, does. we have the Neb. Whereas, yeah. Neb can just Firemen. Go. I mean, I, I can as a last resort if we like run out of uh, wood or anything. Well, no, but... I'm just saying like if the fire goes out, you're a little fire starter. That's, that's all I'm saying. That's true. I'm not sure how well I'll do it actually putting wood in there, but I can get it started. Well, do we want to go take a look and see? Farusa's like a lumberjack family, so I don't think we're going to She's literally. If we need to cut wood, I'm good. If we need to cut wood and pile it up, <laughs> I think I'm good. <laughs> but I think I agree with Neb. I think we should go check first. And then uh, we have one there. entire car that we haven't looked at yeah. yet. Yeah. Is that the one with well. the same? You have not been to the caboose. Um, and you have not you have not been into the tender. You have peeked into the engine, um, mm -hmm. and you saw the passing of someone mm -hmm. in that engine. But I, I don't believe you went back there, unless I'm misremembering. Well, we didn't. Maeve, I, I definitely want to go check out the caboose. I want the but, caboose, yeah. But if we can at least get the lights on before it gets dark, then fair enough. We, we can keep. We can keep checking the caboose later, but otherwise we'd have to wait until the next day. Works for me. All right, let's go start a train. <laughs> <laughs> start walking out. Uh, okay. Because there's um, snow everywhere. Do we have time to go to our rooms, change and such? <laughs> that would be that. great to see our quarters. Does everyone remember where their rooms were? Something comfortable. <laughs> what, will the showers work if there's no power, though? They've might wait. Cold. I might wait for the power to go. Probably. Neb's happy to check out her room and just like mm -hmm. double check that her her mm -hmm. luggage with the stuff that she left behind is still there. But I'm I'm still feeling very. Yeah. excited to Silas kind of check kinda, out anything we can you know sniff checks and it's like yeah yeah i'm fine for a little while <laughs> i mean we you all you all had back. significance you all had significant yeah. experiences just yet <laughs> also if we're going to actually be throwing the wood into the fire and checking out this engine i might as well stay in the clothing that is already kind of dirty mm -hmm. Well, since we're nearby, I'm just going to go pop over for a bit and yeah, sure. grab a couple of things. And so Maeve's going to go uh, just to her room, kind of swap out a couple of things in her bag. Um, and and I'll return um, on wheels. Um, I come out in a, a silver wheelchair. Um, and it's much more comfortable this way. We'll get a <laughs> lot more done. Oh, good. I can move a bunch faster. That's good. So, nice new wheels. Yeah. Epic. Nice new wheel. All right. Onward. Well, 
as you Everything. come down the hallway, you notice that the hallways are wide enough for you. Um, and even Fantastic. as you come back outside, an on, <laughs> yeah, come outside onto that balcony, um, you know, perhaps you noticed before, but the others hadn't, that um, the stairs, there are levers next to the stairs um, that you're pretty sure if you pulled might flatten them out. Well cool. designed. And I will. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, they create a ramp. It's not, uh, it's a steep ramp. And uh, the issue being that there's no platform here. So there is a bit of a, a drop at the other side. It's okay. You can wheelie over some of those. Sweet. Uh, all right. Uh, Fruz is going to go to her room since everyone else is. And she's going to look around. And I guess every, nothing's been moved since we left. Nothing? Nothing. Nothing's been touched. She's sort of looking around the room. Um... It is it is cold though. I mean, really, your you know even your your the metal zippers on your luggage are like <sighs> frosted over, and you touch them and 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 they stick a little bit to the moisture in your mm -hmm. skin. Well, she's gonna um, go over and look in the the mirror in her bathroom, and just sort of like <laughs> stare at herself, like because she's sort of like does this in the mirror and then she leans forward and is looking at like the stains in her face and she's like yeah. oh, God. and she's just gonna um make sure her axe is in her belt loop and she's just gonna go back out to join the others my room's on top other than being freezing everything's still there no one's waiting for me silas do you still have all your towels uh, well, no, I took the towels with me. I would never chance those to just be left behind. Um, but and thank you uh, for that. Absolutely. Uh, you never know when you're going to need a good towel. But I don't I, I don't mean to alarm anyone. But do you remember that when we were in quite a hurry to leave this train? Yes. I vaguely remember that we like put powdered sugar all over the place and there were little footprints <laughs> and like we didn't know what it was and I don't know, now maybe we can say it was something supernatural because I don't think that that's pretty wild for me to say. Well, wasn't it that when we put that stuff down, it was the other people on the train who were just, yeah. yeah, in a I don't know. Different... Like, do we do we know that? Yeah. That's we... I mean, I feel better about that if that's honestly the case, but. I mean, I can't say for sure. I didn't know very much about magic six days ago, and now I know, I think, a lot more and probably not enough. Okay, that's fine. Let's get this thing started because it's going to be night, you know, soon. And, you know, I would prefer mm. not to be around a campfire again. Yeah. Tonight, so. mm. Agreed. Yeah. I'll just take a yeah. passing glance at my room to make sure, yeah. like, oh, there's the bag. Nothing seems untouched, but Neb is... Yeah, everything focused. seems the way you left it. Robin, uh, So gonna... where are you heading first? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Robin. Oh, Robin's just going to poke into her room. She has a trunk next to the bed, and she kind yes. of peeks into it, and she just kind of pats her hand uh, in this blanket, and inside the blanket is a framed photo of Harold, and she just says, good, you're still here, and then she'll come back out. So where are you headed? We the should go to the car. tender and make sure that we've got <laughs> plenty of wood. Let's go. Sure. Okay. Um, so you move up through the train. Uh, do you want to go through the train or outside? Let's go through the train. Through the so train, yeah, because we've been here. went on the outside, didn't she, already? Yeah. Or was that the other car? No, we we had done a kind of a sweep up and down perimeter circle, <laughs> um, and then I don't think we actually. So we didn't get into the tender um, caboose. We didn't finish yeah. the engine. We didn't check completely. We I just don't want to get out of there. Yeah, when we got <laughs> yeah. into the baggage car, I know that there were doors on the opposite mm -hmm. on the either side, but I I think you had to then go out outside the baggage car and around to the tender. Am I remembering this correctly? So, um, yeah, I mean, you want if you want to go through the if you're going through the train now, yeah, um, yeah, you're you're heading up forward towards the baggage car from your sleeper car, right? 
Mm -hmm. As you move into the baggage car, yes, it's filled with all of this equipment that you guys raided for your, your trip. It's filled with extra MREs, things like that. There's a door out to the side that has a big ramp and everything you can use to load equipment in and out. And then there's a, just a regular sliding train door at the far end. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it would be the opposite direction, past your bedrooms, past the lounge, the dining room, into the past the kitchen and crew quarters that would lead you to the caboose. Um, so the tender from the outside, there are all kinds of handholds and things and ladders and rungs mm -hmm. and pipes and stuff along it. Um, but there does also seem to be a door from the baggage car heading towards the tender. Well, it would make sense that anyone operating the train could get to all the places on the train without getting off the train. So, and I'll go over to the door that leads to the tender and see if I can mm -hmm. open it. Yeah, as you pull it, it is freezing cold and stiff. Please give me an, uh, acro an athletics check, please. Sure. <laughs> I love this. Uh, athletics. Yay! Neb is really excited about getting <laughs> everything done. She's super focused. I rolled a 19 for an Woo! 18. Amazing. What entire weight against yeah. this door. Now it makes a screech like you guys haven't heard in a long time. Because it just sort of Neb oh, pulls it scraping along the bottom and it opens up. And Neb, what you, you see ahead of you is a corridor that immediately turns to the right that is probably 12 inches wide yeah. and four, inch, four, four feet tall. Tiny little corridor that goes in for about a foot and a half and then turns to the right. And as you peer forward, it seems to be a tight little corridor that heads you know, along the inside of this tender. Wow, this is so small, I would have to crouch. Yeah, I ain't getting in there. Do you like, want me to go take well, a... Well, luckily, you can... Neb, you could turn and crawl, Pitch. maybe, if you, if you turned into yeah. your rat self. I yeah. mean, but, but that's the thing, like, there's got to be an actual way to get in here, right? Because people got in there. A person can fit through this. It's just a squeeze. A person can fit through this, it's just a squeeze. Yeah, it's a sideways, I... bent over, all through it. Wait, we, we were in tighter quarters in the mine. I'm, yeah, but, but know, that was a not... mine. This is a train, like where people do their jobs and work and stuff. So it's probably built so that it's not going to cause any problems to do what we got to do, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Neb is going to crouch down and like slowly start to yeah. wind her way. All right. Uh, we send Neb to the, 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 the den of lions every time. I'm like, oh, Silas is going to Neb start to herself. start to uh, go around and start to look on the side and just see if there are any other uh, entrances. So there are no other entrances into the tender. You can see some handholds, places that you could climb up to the top. Of I'm going to climb but... to the top. Silas okay, give me the an athletics check, please, Silas. <laughs> Um, dirty 20. A dirty 20. Mm -hmm. um, you pull yourself up. Hopefully you're wearing mittens of some kind. And even Towels. then, even... Towels. <laughs> you can feel the colds under your fingertips as you sort of reach the top of that. As you pull yourself up on top, it is filled with wood, about halfway filled up. Um, but in the center of this thing is a tank. Um, at the top, there's sort of a hatch um, that is sort of, you know, it's sort of been locked down, but you're pretty sure if you were to sort of flip it, you'd be able to open it up. Um, within Neb, inside of this thing, this corridor, and, and I'd say Silas looking at it from above, you're pretty sure this corridor goes in, turns, sneaks around the tank, sort of following the outside edge, allowing passage while the train would be moving and then comes out the other side with access to the engine. But it is a tight, tight little squeeze. Um, Silas, as you sort of move towards the engine, um, you do see that there is a ladder that comes down from the top of this area. And you see a body lying in the engine cab. Oh, hey, hey, I, I don't want anyone to be frightened. 
Um, but someone is dead right here. Neb, you've been squeezing your way through. It. You can make it. It's free passage, but you couldn't do anything while you were in there. You sort of edged your way through sideways, coming around the corner, and you as well, as you get the opening at the side of, you know, the front of this tender, see a body of an old man lying do we, on do the Do we floor. recognize this person at all? Who was it that peeked into the... Robin. It would have been Robin. Robin. It was me, yeah. So no, you do not recognize him. But, but Robin told us about an old man. Yeah. So at, at this point, um, Silas is going to um, like really mentally take it in mm -hmm. um, how he looks, and then is going to um, you know kind of scurry back across to wherever Robin is, and mm -hmm. then he is going to form a visual mm. like pigment of the the face and he's going to try to remove some of the decay or anything that could possibly be but he's going to say robin do you recognize this person oh well i only so got glimpses but it does appear to be the person you remember, you know, gr sort of gray sideburns and gray hair. But Robin, from where you're standing, you can very really clearly see a grave site to the side. Yeah, that's what I thought. You all passed it on your way out. Yeah. But uh, uh, are there two dead people? And one wasn't buried, but the other was? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> you s we... feel as though you saw the misty spirit of this person it was of this person this person is what if this person got caught here like us and we just left them here and the werewolf got oh. i'm pretty Does sure like this person by a werewolf well no i didn't get he close looks enough he's a dead body very very cold he looks his skin is blue and oh. frost and snow have sort of settled upon him is Neb has just been standing, crouching yeah. there the whole time, looking at this body, listening to everybody talk. Um, is the body in the tender or is in that little corridor in the tender? No, it is in the engine cabin. Okay. Okay. Um, but, but is the door open there? Um, there is no door. Oh, <laughs> the okay. The tender corridor has no door. Got it. And it just get... like completely open on the engine to where basically they can just yes. go in freely. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Neb just has to step across the coupling. I'm gonna step across and very, very slowly approach this body. And Neb is both a little disturbed and horrified, and then also curious. Mm -hmm. And she feels a little guilty about being curious, but she's mm -hmm. still gonna step forward and take a a long look. And si Silas mm -hmm. is making his way back over there, and eventually, if she hasn't done it yet, Silas is going to say, Neb, like, l let's not touch it, at least. To be honest, Silas, that was what I was going to try to do next. Let's please, please not touch it. Like, I, I, I know, not... I know. I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't going to touch it until everybody was here, but all the other people, the alive people, we couldn't interact with. Are you sure he's not alive? He's definitely... Well, that... I mean, I've never seen a dead body before, or at least... I, do, do you all want to come over this way? Like, I, you know, you can take the low road or the high road. The high road is a lot more spacey. While they're coming on over, up. I'd like yeah. to kind of. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Oh, like, she, I'm near you. She <laughs> won't touch it, or... but she okay. wants to yeah. <laughs> really give this body a once over and try to see and how this person died. Is this a a body that is a corporeal thing that she could possibly interact with, and not the weird half in the universe, mm. half out that she was seeing? Medicine or investigation check, whichever you prefer. I... Exactly what you're looking for. Uh, fa face that. up or face down? Face up. Yeah. Are the eyes open? The eyes are open. They are <gasps> cloudy, and frost has covered them. I'm pretty sure this this is a person who has passed. 
That's and really that funny. probably bothers Neb a little bit more than it mm. should. She got an eight. An eight. Mm. As you lean over, looking at the eyes and taking in this just pale, cold, hard flesh, its hand reaches up, grabbing for your throat. <gasps> Please give me a dexterity saving throw. <gasps> I swear. <laughs> Okay. Okay. All right, that's a seventeen. Oh, he jumped geez. as much as I did. <laughs> you jump as far back, pulling back into the corridor as it rises up. Its bones breaking as it starts to kind of it's 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 an almost non-seeing cloudy eyes look towards you, and its hand reaches out, just missing sinking its fingers into the grate of the cabin, it pulls itself kind of up onto its knees, crawling forward towards you. Silas, are you watching? Yes. You and, see and, and, this and, from above. I, I begin and, and, to chase watching. Neb into this tiny little squeezed corridor. And as soon as Silas sees this, he's like, zombie, 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 we, we, we've got a zombie. What? And he just yells it out. <laughs> like, I'm not joking this time, zombie. And Silas is actually, um, at this point in time, going to uh, you know, I I don't know if we're entering initiative or not, but he is going to try to do something to this. Okay. Are we saying that the uh, top part here is open? It's fairly open. Yeah, so the, okay. the train cabin of the engine is open. It has a roof on it, right. but there's no sides, and you just it's just open to the back of the tender there, right. or the front of the tender. Can I still um, see it to try to attack? Or you can. Well, let's go ahead and roll initiative. Yeah, okay. uh, <laughs> we'll put everyone in the initiative to see it's been a little while since we've had an initiative um we'll put everyone in it and see when you all figure out what's going on (laughs) oh Oh, god whoa robin (laughs) 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 what'd you roll robin a natural one oh Oh, no you know what is that adjusted for yeah, you're free. I got a zero initiative. <laughs> so she just cannot compute that there's an actual zombie. Yeah. All right. It takes Perusa. a minute to process this out. Mm-hmm. Perusa, what'd you roll for initiative? I think I got a 19. A 19 for Perusa. Mm-hmm. Uh, Maeve. 15. 15 for Maeve. Silas. 18. 18 for Silas and Neb in the thick of it. I also got a 15, but I'm pretty right. sure that Maeve is way faster than me. So we'll give you a 14-ish and then, okay. Okay, um, we start with Feruza. Um, so really all you've heard is probably Neb scream and then Silas goes, zombie, 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 zombie. <laughs> what? I did and say I are... wasn't joking this time. <laughs> Seriously? Okay, so I'm trying to figure out like where we are. So, so I think far? you all were if 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 you were at the back of the tender, right? Yes. Um yes. you were so you're still on the train back there yes. with Maeve and Robin. Silas jumped down and climbed up to the top. Neb disappeared mm-hmm. into this tiny corridor. The tender's at least 20 feet long. Um, you either have to go into the tiny corridor, climb up over it, jump off the train and come around the sides, but the commotion you heard is up towards the engine. Okay, so she just, I mean, literally, I have 30, 30 feet uh, moving speed. Yeah. She's gonna go as fast as she can toward Silas's zombie, 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 because she heard scream and then so she's just gonna go, what? She's gonna take Are you off. going into the corridor outside? How do you want to get there? Straight to the corridor. The quickest straight to the corridor. The quickest way, yeah. Sure. All right. Sure, sure. Yeah, straight to the corridor. So you <laughs> double, you know, almost bend over in two oh, as you slide your way into this tiny little, I mean, like yeah. your legs having to fold in on themselves a little bit as you just idea. inch your way through. You come up against Neb, who is right at the doorway of this thing as she jumped back. Um, Perusa, with just Perusa, a Perusa, panicked it's face. A zombie, it's a zombie, it's a zombie. And unfortunately, there's this little turn. So with okay. Neb right there, you are unable to see past her, um, but you do hear the scrape of nails against iron. What is it? It's, it, it's, the Silas was right, it's a zombie. 
What is it doing? Can I, can I, can, can Verza it, see it or is she like, she can just hear it? can't see it. She can, it. She can just hear it right now. Neb is in the way <laughs> and you're still okay. squeezing past her in this little corridor. Can I get past her? I mean, it's, I told you, it's, this is like 14, 15 inches wide at most. Okay. I'm fucking um, up the end, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Does, <laughs> does it know where you are? Does it know where Neb is? Does it? Oh yeah, it tried to grab me. Okay. Um, there's really nothing I'm gonna do at this point because I don't want to do anything to, you know what? Um, I'm in this tight little corridor. I'm afraid to rage because <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> um, okay. At this point, she just she starts breathing heavy, and Neb's like, oh, "I know that," and her eyes start flashing, and it almost feels like Farusa's getting bigger. <laughs> Oh, she's no. like, oh, the no. little bit of light that you yeah. can see around Fruza's body just disappears <laughs> as she, like, her Hulk muscles just... Stop here! I'm gonna get stuck in here! <laughs> and she's literally going to dive... Like, I don't know if, if I can maybe, like, push through Neb. You're gonna push pushing. Neb forward. <laughs> if, she, if she does that, I'll let her because okay. of what Neb wants to do on her turn. So okay. she won't resist. Really? So yeah. essentially, you're, 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 like, you you're like tackling Neb forward <laughs> back into the engine. Okay, okay, okay. Is if that, you go to push, I would, I'd be like, now that everybody knows, like, mm -hmm. I'd be moving to get out of everybody's way, but moving towards the zombie. So if you push, I will, I won't resist. I don't think I could. <laughs> <laughs> I she's think like immediately push. realizing, yes. Yeah. yeah. She feels right. like she's getting bigger. So she like sort of like in her, she's like, okay, maybe I can like sort of bear hug Neb, tuck and roll with like, like protecting Neb as best as she can. Okay. And forward catapult into the, the engine. Okay. You, your weight falling forward into Neb. I mean, you can just do this. Neb says she's not going to resist. <laughs> um, <laughs> you grab her and you do sort of roll out as you land on the ground. Uh, you will be prone for this, I think, then, if you're tucking and rolling. Would you rather not be prone? If I can stay up, sure. Okay. I just, my vision is like, I'm thinking of the tunnel, but okay. Gotcha. If I can stay, like, if I can grab her, scuttle okay. out. Okay, so you'll scuttle out, kind of holding yeah. Neb in front of you. Do you turn so that you're between her and the thread? Yes. Or? Okay, That's I got, so I rolling vertically, not, not like, yeah, gotcha. just to get out of it. <laughs> So you pull out, you immediately see this, and he's mm. a little man, you know, he's maybe 5'5". Five, five. He's got this, you know, gray sideburns. He looks frozen solid. Um, he's missing some teeth uh, as he kind of, you know, claws his way forward and sort of, again, looks up at you with these clouded over eyes. Um, as you sort of turn your back on this creature who is now right at your feet. Okay, um, and right here, like, I mean, Neb would notice that Bruza looks like she's, yes. like, seven feet tall. And her hair, <laughs> it just looks longer. It's, like, electric. And she immediately just turns toward this creature, and she's like, no! Find something from Babe. <laughs> <laughs> and she would like to attack recklessly. All she right, go for it. Like, okay, this is going to be just... Anything. This will be like a okay. We'll do this. It, these electric sparks just like come out at him. So it's eighteen plus two. That's an unnatural twenty. <laughs> an unnatural twenty. It's uh, an that will be a dirty twenty. I love it. Twenty. Oh, plus twenty twenty. Let's prove me first. I'm thinking it's really because I realized that I okay. So now that she's trying, so I'm twenty two. Sorry. 22 I to hit, knew. absolutely yeah. hits. <laughs> Yay. Let's see. Five damage, that's such a... <laughs> With your axe? No, this is like oh. when she she sort of goes toward him and it's uh -huh. like, I mean, a flavored dagger. A flavored oh, okay. dagger, but it's like electric okay. sparks that come out of right. her hands. Right, right, right. Yeah, okay. right at him. So yeah, right at him. Um, and you see it sort of... Um, 
slashes across his flesh, immediately opening the wound. There's no blood. Um, if anything, it, it's almost like cutting through a snowman or ice of some kind. It kind of opens and shatters, and and really, what falls out of his face appears to be crystals or snowflakes, um, almost as if he himself is made of ice um, as it crosses his cheek. Uh, he has no response, no pain reaction whatsoever to what you've done. An abomination. Where did you mm. come from? But that's all she can do. Mm-hmm. Okay. Silas, you're up next. Silas is going to. So can, Silas can see the creature from where he is. From state, you're up on top of the yeah. tender, looking down. You saw Feruza push Neb forward, yeah. spin, and you know shoot these ice daggers or these electric lightning daggers at this thing, and you saw essentially snow fall out of its face. You see um, the green ring just kind of float um, out of Silas's pocket and land on his hand mm -hmm. um, without him hitting a button, and it lights up. And then he uh, he says, in brightest day, in blackest night, I am so tired of these monsters. I wish they'd get out of our sight. I wish I may. I wish I might finally get some magic that can help in a fight. And he, as he does this, I was uh, rapping. You, you see, you see a uh, you see the ring light up, and uh -huh. then a green ray strikes down, and it's going to attack with that. Oh, nice. Uh, 19. That'll hit. And that is going to be big money, big money, big money. Yes, 10 damage. 10 damage. 10 damage. 10 force damage. Um, it bangs into one of his shoulders. Um, as it does, his arm kind of almost breaks backwards as it falls sort of back, uh, opening him up his chest uh, to the other two, um, as you do. Um, again, it's the crack almost as, as if icicles were falling off of the eaves of a roof at home. Um, the, the crack of ice underneath your foot as you step out onto a frozen lake. And then with a bonus action, um, seeing this uh, snowy display here, mm -hmm. um, Silas is going to say, uh, on your feet, Neb, because baby, you're a firework. And, um, <laughs> light that thing up and you are inspired okay and keep in mind you can use that for damage as well if the case comes up. so that's a d6 right. right yeah d6 as silas is singing on top of the tender mave oh i know i just sat down oh <laughs> Whoa. and they're in danger again at least i'm my gloves all right and i will go around the side and because i have on my my wheelchair gloves which yes. now re recognize the fingerless gloves i was wearing earlier <laughs> as what they are um so they have leather thick leather leather surfaces um to protect your palms i'll go ahead and swing around on the um the rungs to get up where silas is um yeah. athletics Ugh. <laughs> you can i mean i'll offer you acrobatics why not I love similar. acrobatics. Let's go but, with acrobatics. I want yeah, you to do something. Uh, it's a 13. It's a 13. So you get about halfway. Um, it's harder than you, than you thought. I'm very tired. Um, it's been a long you are couple of very days. Tired. It has been very long. It's very cold. Um, you get about halfway along down the tender. So you just, I'm just not going to give you your full movement on it. Okay. Um, with it to get up there. Can I see what's going on from where I am? From where you are? If you lean back. I'll offer you okay. that. Uh, so holding on with one hand and kind of leaning back, you can just see around the corner, you know, sort of the arm go back and the, maybe the back edge of his head. He's All got right. a little bit of cover on you. I have my eye on you. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I will just say, it's been a very long day. No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I have up to 120 feet on that. Yeah. So you were so that's a that. 20, dirty 20. Sheesh, Yay. you guys. Look at these rolls tonight. Uh, yeah, you Yay. even with his cover. Um, okay. And that is going to do this. And I get mm -hmm. having my eye on him. <laughs> um, 
12 points of course wow. damage. Oof. Same Oof. thing. As his arm goes back, you know, from the force damage from Silas, it's like, and another one sort of knocks it back behind his head. Neb and Feruza and Silas, as you're looking, it contorts behind his body, bending in the wrong direction. And again, you hear this crack um, as if he has oh. no bones, but they're breaking and it doesn't bother him. Yeah, that feels familiar. <laughs> a great chiropractic session going on in front of you. <laughs> Anything else, Maeve? Uh, no, that's everything I can do. All right. Neb, inspired. Uh, you're, you know, now Feruza's kind of turned to you so that she is between you and it. You can look up and see Silas with his green glowing ring. You hear the cracks from behind you. Uh, the startled uh, shout that she let out and being disturbed by this sight has now given way to, oh, Feroz is doing awesome things, and Maeve is doing awesome things. Uh, all the awesome things are happening. I gotta join in. That looked like too snow. Too much damage. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, might have been I too forgot. much damage? I forgot I had my eye on it. Was it I'm too, sorry to too... No, that's okay. It was too much or too little? Uh, too little. I, I should too little. Two yeah, yeah, yeah. Two more points. Okay, great. No worries. Maeve does right, something. Now, go ahead even more awesome as <laughs> my, my hand uh, lights up with fire and I'm gonna throw some fire at this thing. Okay. Leaning yeah. around the edge of Feruza as you like curveball it around the side uh, to get towards this thing. And thankfully uh, Silas is very inspiring because that helped me get a 16. Uh, that will hit. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. Uh, that is only going to be two fire damage. That's... Two fire damage. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Not as much as um, I was hoping. <laughs> as it comes around and it swoops past, you know, again, this arm is sort of here. Maybe it's gone underneath his arm where it's sort of contortioned behind. You can, it opens up again this wound and again this sort of the this snowy, you know, uh, crystals, almost like little diamonds seem to fall out of the side of him and it and it's pouring now out of that one wound that you made not tremendously but you know really just like diamonds pouring out of the side of his body clattering onto the iron grate below anything else Nip? and does it look like the fire actually melted anything like confirming that this is ice or is this not now... melted no you don't see water dripping or anything like that I, I don't know what this thing is made out of, but I don't I don't know if it's ice. And then that's it. That's all that's she's it. got. All right. Uh, it's its turn. Um, Feruza, right there, again, unbothered. <laughs> this arm seems to just crack back into place as it pulls itself up to its feet. It's now up to your, you know, belly button. Um, a stabilizing brace will help with that. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's going to lurch forward towards you with its whole torso um, and its mouth open. And again, it's missing teeth um, in this kind of uh, grin comes across its face as it leans into you. All right. Hideous. Oh, probably not going to get you. It's only a 10. No. So as yeah. it leans forward, it just seems to bounce off of you and bounce back uh, again, sort of staggering a little bit back uh, as it then uh, oh. readjusts its weight, looking back towards you. Uh, Robin, your turn. You kiddos are doing great. I'll be over here. <laughs> just kidding. Robin is going to. Uh, you said it was possible to exit this train. Yes, you can, oh, and you can get off the, you know, off the side and come around. <laughs> we can finally have enough home. to out. She's like, nope. <laughs> Why didn't we try that before? To <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd like to get off Dungeon Master. If I'm... Uh, she's Stop gonna... the train. I want to get off. I want to get off. <laughs> um, she's going to get off on the left side of the train, which uh -huh. I believe... Um, uh, and she's gonna head if she can in her movement. I, I think we're close enough yep. to where that grave was. Yes. And I'm going to inspect the grave if it has been disturbed or not disturbed. If this is different bodies. Investigation body. check, please. Give me something good. Not a one. It's an eight. It's an eight. <laughs> um, looking at it, it's covered with snow. 
you know, snow has fallen since you left, so you can't really tell if anything has happened to it. There's fresh snow on that grave. Um. Okay. Um, then... Okay. Um, I shall not do that. Okay. <laughs> I can't do that. It's a ritual. Okay. Um... Okay, then, uh, how, can I see what's going on from here? How, how now you're a little bit of a distance. Now you're about, you know, 30 feet from the engine, but you're more alongside of it. So yes, as you look over, you look down at the snow covered grave, you can still see the sticks, you know, sticking up where they made the cross, but the whole grave is covered in fresh snow. And you look over your shoulder, you can see this thing get to its feet and bounce off of the side of Feruza. Um, uh, and it just sort of is is standing there, you know, waiting to go again. Okay, it, with my investigation, a um, It'd be the action. action. Yeah. That's my yeah. action. Movement and action you've had. Okay, then um, I'm gonna stay here and probably in my next turn, uh, mm-hmm. kind of continue this. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll offer with your bonus action. You know, if you want to do a very small. Um, Nothing, not if you want to like start uncovering the snow or something like that, you could start. I think what I'm going to do is just brush away anything that looks fresh. Okay. And so we'll let you it... get started on that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you don't have okay. to use any of your next turn to do that. Okay. okay great. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, we are back up to Feruza. It just Ooh. bounced off your chest, steps back like a foot, and just pushes its weight back forward as though it's going to come in again. Get it, oh my Marissa. god, it's like, try again. She's like, try again. Takes the oh, I should have. I'm so sorry. I should have had advantage on that last attack. <gasps> I mean, shouldn't I have? Oh, um, and you know what? I should have had a plus two on that damage. I just let it go. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while since we've had to roll in. I, I yeah. will take that damage, and I will also take my advantage. On yeah, you. so add two points to that damage. Oh, I will take my natural 20. <gasps> <gasps> oh. Oh, oh. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. That. That's what I'm talking that about. That wasn't a fair trade. Glad I attacked recklessly. That's okay. I rolled. I rolled badly on my damage. Um, you're only taking three bludgeoning damage. Oh, um, I only get one point five. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> you're is. easy. You're easy. <laughs> okay. This is definitely a fair trade in that sense. So he does bang into you. You just it hurts. He is rock solid as he bangs into you and he's a little sharp any place where there's like a bone or a, you know as he bangs into you you it's like banging into a edge of a table um he's a real hard sharp creature here um all right well we're going back over <laughs> Feruza, top of your new next turn <laughs> she as he bounced off her, oh wait that should like... have been doubled though i apologize i did oh not so it. three and I rolled the exact Here's same thing again. And so six six total. Okay, three, because I'm resistant. So three, because you're resistant. resistant. Yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, he bounced into her and nicks her in the side, mm-hmm. and she's like, Titans don't swat at mosquitoes. And she does look bigger. And she's going to take out her, take out her axe from behind her, and the axe itself definitely looks like it's more, um, I don't know, for bidding for Bowden. It looks more like yeah. thing in a huge my brain isn't working. It was really early call time. And she There's just a little went, heft to it. Yeah. Yes, that's it. There's and it just looks it. Yeah. It looks more imposing. Portional to you. She's gonna like it she's gonna flip it so it swings and then swing yes. right <laughs> like, Yes. <laughs> just. All right, let's see. <sighs> let's see. Are you being reckless again? Yeah. Okay. okay. 15 plus 2 is 17. <laughs> the digital dice. 17 to hit, we'll hit. All right, let's see. Go ahead and roll your damage. Happen. Do it. Eight points of damage. Eight points of damage. Mm-hmm. Boom. Okay. Oh, um, as this axe just whacks into him, his whole head falls backward. Um, exposing the inside of his neck. 
Um, it's still hanging on by a thread as it just lulls off to the side. And again, these crystals, these diamonds, these icy bits just spill and spew from inside of his body. It's almost like looking inside of a geode as his head has kind of fallen back at this moment. This is Instagrammable content. <laughs> I thought I'd keep going. She just, at first, just staring at it like, in actual disgust, like almost yeah. like, like what just happened. She's like conflicted. It's horrible. Um, yeah. It's beautiful too, but it's horrible. And he's just yeah. this cute, the, he's just this cute little old man. Um, yeah. I really think he's adorable, <laughs> but deadly. Yeah. Um, but dead, <laughs> but possibly dead. Um, is that all for is it? Yeah, that's it for me. All right, Silas. Uh, Silas is going to. It, it, does he need to reposition to see it clearly? Nope. You're okay. st still right so down he there. He is going to, you know, take up his uh, perch still, and uh, he's going to raise his hand with the ring again, and just says, "I shall shed my light over dark evil, for the dark things cannot stand the light." And I'm going to let out another green blast from the ring. Um, and that is going to be a seventeen. That'll hit. Uh, your damage uh, all right. and uh eight points of force damage eight. all right as this green light shoots out it hits right in that remaining spot on his neck completely severing the head from the body as the head falls to the ground behind and the body follows as soon as it hits the grate at the bottom it shatters into thousands of these little sharp pieces of snow or crystal, these clear little crystallines. I would like Neb, Feruza, and Silas to all make dexterity saving throws. 15. Uh, right. Good 16. thing I do have, have advantage, so... Well, that makes it a 10. Okay. Um, Feruza shielded all, Neb. That's how it, that's yes, how I got better Feruza than you. <laughs> you all feel this wave of, of crystal shards, these sharp little pieces fly at you as you sort of protect yourself and you feel just these little pricks along your body as it begins to sort of shed off of you. Feruza, you can feel the, the cuts along the inside. Um, you are going to take Oh, yes. Ooh, five piercing damage. Um, oh all along the floor of this engine cabin now are just these little shards, little sparkly shards of ice, of crystal, of light um, that once was this being. We are out of initiative. Okay. Don't step Robin. on the glass. <laughs> and Maeve, off to the side. Uh, what do you? We'll start with what you guys do in this moment. Mm -hmm. I'd like to get Since to a, we a more stable place, and I think if we're going to have to go into the room, I'd like to just kind of swing in and find a place to sit down. Okay, mm -hmm. so you'll pull yourself forward into the engine cabin. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, you make it up forward there, and you too now see just these sort of. Again, it's like diamonds strewn across the ground. You see Feruza standing there, little pinpricks of, of blood along her body, uh, just these little tiny things, and, and, and Silas and Neb a little bit, but Feruza's really got all these tiny little pricks. Are y'all right? Yeah, it's just like little pepper, pepper dots. It's just, are, I have no idea what that was. Did, are there any in your arm or do they bounce off? Oh, could, did they bounce off or did they t -t 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 melt? <laughs> <laughs> um, they seem to have bounced off. Give me. Hmm. Oh, I am resistant. So you are resistant. That's helpful. Mm -hmm. um, as you run your hand along and feel, it does still feel a little sharp. No, they're like little tiny pieces of glass. Like little tiny pieces of glass. Oh. Like, by, oh, remember when you were a kid and your parents told you to stay away from fiberglass and you still went and played with it anyway? Fiberglass no? sucks. Okay, never mind. That's what it feels like. Mm. Yeah. I, I, I think I might can try to help. Like, Silas, Silas is going to try to, because with the precision version of what he can do with a telekinetic force, 
He's going to oh, see if mm -hmm. he can, like, if they are in a place where they could be grabbed with a finger. Are they that large? Um, some of them, um, not really. They're okay. very fine. It's almost like sand. Uh, fiberglass is a good, a good uh, mm. correlation, I think. Um, maybe, you know, one or two of them might be like you could put them on the end of your finger and maybe just sort of see it. But they're do I, sharp. Do I feel like, but since, since I have seen this happen a couple of times before now, do uh -huh. I feel like magically restoring the wound would expunge it? Um, arcana check. Okay. First one of those. Mm. <laughs> yeah. um, Awareness 14. of magic. Yeah. Um, you do think that the wound would heal. It doesn't, you know, it, it, it's, you know, you can kind of dust away the remaining things. And it, they just look like wounds. They don't look, you know, there's not an aura or an energy. Yeah, of that kind of nature. Okay. For, for reason, hold, hold still. And then right. uh, Silas is going to just... You see a little bit of green energy because he, he's on a theme right now, uh, kind of washes out and uh, it's going to restore um, six points of health. Nice, thank you. That's perfect. Um, Whoa. Okay, so now the shards are like floating to Does anyone have a broom? <laughs> um, <laughs> mm. So I, I actually have a, a weird question. Yes. Um, so because I had my eye on this creature when it yes. died, normally if I were injured, I would have been able to channel that magic, that life uh -huh. force to heal myself. Uh -huh. um, I don't need that healing right now, but uh -huh. was there anything I could sense in that? Um, How about an arcana, if not, that's okay. an arcana check from you as well, and we'll see. Okay. Oh boy. 19. Okay. It definitely wasn't life force. Huh. This was undeadish. <laughs> oh. Not oh, boy. Um, oh, boy. That you sensed. Um, <laughs> that, yeah. Yeah. Hearing you know, Silas talk zombie, about zombie, a... zombie is not correct. It might not be zombie, zombie, zombie. It's not incorrect. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it might not be zombie, zombie, zombie as Silas <laughs> is used to. Um, but yeah, this was not a living creature. Silas starts to telekinetically um, broom mm -hmm. like the things on the ground just to make walkways mm -hmm. where nobody accidentally steps on this stuff. Okay. And then as yeah. he's doing it, he just kind of randomly starts saying, Carl! Carl, where are you? Never can find that boy. And and he just keeps like he keeps uh sweeping. Okay, we're gonna do two last things here before we, we go. Um Robin, what are you doing over at the gravesite? Uh yeah, gently brushing away any fresh <laughs> snow and, mm -hmm. and seeing to if I get down to the compacted snow that might have been made for a grave or if it is disturbed. Yes, as you begin to sweep away the snow, you can you hear the explosion of this creature, the shattering. You hear Silas tending to Feruza, the sort of oh. little bit of pain gasp as they deal with her arm. Um, you know, uh, the the sweeping of the sort of clatter of these diamondy crystals, this glass as it falls through the grate as he cleans it up. And just as that is happening, you sweep aside, and you can see that the the hard dirt below has never been disturbed, but that the the leaves, the rocks, all of the things that they had used to cover up this body have indeed been cast aside. But the when you say like the dirt, the snow. The dirt was too um, oh, to, to, to dig into. So it, he was never buried. Okay, got or, it. Or, you know, whatever they did. But so then the, the things that he was covered with are brushed aside. Yeah. So the understanding then that Robin could put together is that he came out of this grave and went back to the train and then laid down? <laughs> <laughs> that's your understanding. <laughs> All right, that's Laid a be. trap is what he did. Yeah, mm. laid a trap. Mm. I'll wait for them here. <laughs> okay. As then. Robin makes this, res this, this realization, Beruza, mm-hmm, 
Something just must have got past your glasses. Uh, just a little, a little piece of something there, but something in you doesn't tells you not to tell your friends. Oh. But maybe just their voices are a little bit grating. You kind of Isn't that normal? Some <laughs> don't want to hear them. Oh yeah, every day. Just kidding. <laughs> As you kind of are irritated by this just little piece of something here, you just find you're just a little on edge. And with that, we will end this chapter of Children of Air Oh, no. Oh. Please, everyone, remember, Uh-oh. life itself is a wonderful fairy tale. And we will see you next week. Good night. Help us. <laughs>